right, we're trying this again. We are going live. Let's see if it works. Seems to be working. My video interrupted, paused. Okay, there it goes. Now it's back up. Hi, everybody. Okay, I think we are actually live now. I have just moved the uh, screen and there we go. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to start with our 3D stuff today because that's what I have set up. I wanted to show off these really cool gauntlets that we have. Um, you can see the top of them here, but uh, the reason I wanted to show these off is because they light up. So they're really cool. Here's Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Listen to me, Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man's fist. <laughs> His snap gauntlet. And yeah, now you can see it. Um, come back this way a little bit. There we go. So you see it lights up. Um, come go down a little bit. The, the light is glowing. There we go. Um, and then let him get a hold of the. Thanos gauntlet, and it's, it's behind, so I'm trying to catch up. There we go. Now you can see the light up, the gems, uh, infinity stones light up on that gauntlet as well. So you can control the universe with just snap of your fingers. Also in our 3D stuff, we have a new 1000 piece puzzle. Uh, this is from... Uh, Marvel Comics, this is the villains. Okay. <laughs> he had to switch places, <laughs> switch sides that I was looking at so I can actually see when I'm <laughs> as I'm talking. Okay, so anyway, Marvel 1000 piece video. 1000, look! Puzzle! of the villains of Marvel. So there you go. Is your favorite villain on there? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, by the way, folks, um, just, a, just a quick thing here from Derek. Um, if y'all watched the video a couple weeks ago when I had to uh, impromptuly sit in and do it all by myself, um, if you want me to keep doing that, just just let me know. I mean, that way we don't have to listen to Joanna Babel. Yeah, While we wait for Derek to get things together, because I put them out right next to where he needed them. Turn her up so she can see her, because we're just looking at the top of her right now. We don't even know who she is. Um, seriously, you can't tell the cats? You can't see the cats. You just see little black blobs. Okay. Now you can see cats. See, it's Catwoman. And go that way a little bit. There you go. It's Catwoman. So it's a really cool new statue we have uh, from DC. So pretty cool. And then we told you that we had Middle Earth Ducks. We do indeed have Middle Earth Ducks because these are super, super fun. I made him order these because I just think they're awesome. So if you are a Tolkien fan at all, you need to have your own set of Middle Earth rubber ducks. Because <laughs> they're so cute. Actually, now, given how big they are, I wish I'd ordered even more of them. This one is Legolas, as you see. Legolas. <laughs> they're so cute. And here is Sauron. Sauron. All encased in his, his armor. So if you ever wanted to have an armored duck, now is your chance. Now's your chance. And we didn't order them because I didn't think they looked as cool. Kind of regretting that, but there's you a. See, he doesn't listen to me. Can they see the names of them? I have proof. No, you can't. You have to read them. Just can, read them. Can they see the pictures at least? Or? You can see the picture now, yes. Okay. Oh, now you can see Gandalf the Grey. Gandalf the Grey and Frodo so, back. Slide that way. And there's Frodo. I can't believe you didn't order Frodo. Frodo's the one I wanted. <laughs> you didn't order me Frodo. You ordered. I <laughs> he doesn't you, you listen to me. I want it. Yes, but I wanted them all. You're going to have to fight me for them, guys. Because apparently he didn't order enough. <laughs> Daddy Daughter Day. This is our new children's book. 
uh, hardcover that I wanted to share with you. It's really cute. There's our light. Um, can you take it that way? So it's a holiday, the best holiday in the world. What happens that day? We have adventure. We play. So yeah, and really cute book. The incredibly unique thing that had me order that made me order it is um, the actor Jeff Bridges, and one of his real life daughters uh, did the story. Um, she she wrote the whole thing out, and then he's the one. Jeff Bridges did the artwork. So all in all, a pretty cool book, I think. Have you turned it over on the back? Is that like we're facing the same way, down. but anyway, um, it, it doesn't fit the other way, so it had to I know, go sideways. Is that less or more up there? I don't remember which way it was facing the other way. Okay, but there you go. There they are. Oh, very cool. Oh, now we're going to leave it here. Uh, that way, that this way. We're going to leave it here as the background to everything else. Is it straight? Sure. If it's straight, then I know stuff I put down is straight. That's why I'm asking. Okay, it's straight. She said no, straight, straight. And then she well, it was a little bit off. I wanted to fix it. Okay, so Kingdom of Z. We have two new uh, uh, mangas for you today. This is Kingdom of Z. Volume 2. And we have There's a Demon Lord on the Floor. Volume 8. That does sound like a good thing. A Demon Lord on the Floor. Oh, yeah. uh, graphic novels. We have Archangel 8, Volume 1. Um, this is from AWA Upshot, and um, I really have had several people come back and tell me how much they enjoyed Archangel 8. So if you have not read the AWA stuff, um, now is the perfect time to check it out and see what they've got, because this is the trade. And this has volumes, what, does it tell me? It is an adult action story with conscience and a point to make. That's what it says. Were these all children? Um, yes. They were in order. No, these were over here on the side. Yes, because the one is a children's book, and one is a young adult book, and one is a book book. Not, uh... Probably the first four or five volumes. Maybe the entire graphic. story. I don't know. It doesn't say. Ongoing. But anyway, it's really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Hotel. Also from AWA. <coughs> Their horror anthology book. Um, folks have enjoyed it a lot, I know. Yeah, a lot. Our horror people really enjoyed that one. Uh, Red Border, also AWA. Um, Violent, Frenic, and a Hell of a Good Time. According so, to Comic Book Resources. Yeah, it's a good story. And then we have Year Zero. So, you know, zombies. Yeah. Pretty and good. I believe Year Zero may have been optioned for something. Or, for some reason, number one jumped up in price all of a sudden. Um, and that's usually what does it nowadays. So. TV, TV or movie I'm, or something. I'm thinking that was the case. Netflix, probably. Netflix is, tends to be the, the go-to. The go-to. But, um, yeah, so AWA, all those trades. Um, then we have The Clock. First issue of this sold out, like, instantaneously pre-COVID. And then the world came to an end. Uh, so I know a lot of folks didn't uh, get a chance to continue with it when it came out. So, uh now you've got the whole mini series here in, uh, in one volume. I'm just going to knock everything down. <clears throat> then we have for our D&D fans, this is Die. And this is volume one and two? Volume one, really. No, this is volume two. Oh, sorry, because we're going to do that backward. I maybe mixed them up myself. Um, that is volume one. Because I put them in alphabetical order, but then. He AWAs. wanted to put the AWAs together. I understand yeah, now what he did, but I had them in complete alphabetical order because that's just me. But anyway, this is Die Volume 1 and Volume 2 that is out. And I promise you, if you like fantasy adventure role playing in any way, shape, or form, if you are not reading Die, you need to be reading Die. <laughs> you need to be reading this book. Um, so now you have the chance to read Volume 1 and Volume 2 and get caught up. Jupiter's Legacy, this has just been optioned. Uh, so, yeah, Mark Miller and Millar, Millar, Millar sorry. Um, and uh, Wilfredo Torres, is that what that says? Yep. Yeah, you can scroll through. I don't know. Um, this is volume one, so that you can get ready for the new 
And that is Netflix, right? Oh, the yeah. new Netflix show. Well, yeah, so Mark Millar signed with, with Netflix. And, you know, this is the same Mark Millar from um, The Kingsman, but it wasn't called that in the comics. And I can't think of what the comics were called. Um, and Magic Order. Secret Service. Secret, Secret Service, yeah. And all that great Marvel stuff he did once upon a time. And DC Red Sun, the only DC book he ever uh, did. Yeah. All right, so Legion of Superheroes. Uh, DC has brought us Millennium. This is the prequel story to the new Legion of Superheroes books that are coming out, that are out now, right? Mm -hmm. The Millennium was what before that, yeah. So, yep. really good story. I really enjoyed it. Um, so, there you go. Now you can get it in trade. Read it all at once. And um, Brian Michael Bendis has been doing some really solid work on the new Legion book. So yeah. I strongly recommend it. Definitely. This one it. may not fit. May have to turn it sideways like I did the other one. Oh, it's just going to fit. And it is two-sided, so you're going to take it out and put it on the show the other side because it's a wrap cover. And I can't do it straight. It's so. called Rush, A Making of a Farewell to Kings, the graphic novel. Yes, this is indeed based on uh, the... The making of the album Farewell to Kings by the, the Canadian rock band Rush. And if you turn it over, you will see. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> or you will just tear apart our. <laughs> Great. Give us a moment while we have adjust some technical difficulties. Definitely need a bigger. Uh... No. It... I can't get it back. I had it. Well, now it's upside down. The book is upside down. You no, know, you need to turn the camera then. Well, that's why I can't get it right. Okay, now it's right. Sorry. <laughs> Rush. We'll pick up the world so the camera can stay in the same position. <laughs> Slowly moving Rush out. It's very, very tight space. Again, and while she's he's doing that, while he's doing that, I will show you our young adult book, which is super size. Well, it's okay because only this part is showing anyway. If you get it too far over that way, it's underneath me. I'm too big. Um, so this is book three for the uh, Super Sons young adult book, Escape to Landis. We had one more, Dawn of X, Volume 8. So, yeah, there's not much I can say about Dawn of X, except that I'm really enjoy. And just so you you're, point this out every time one comes out, but this contains the eighth issues of all of the original stories uh, that came out of House of X and Powers of Ten. Um, so this is a great way to get caught up if you don't want to, for some reason, well, I guess I shouldn't say for some reason, if you want to read them in the order that they were, that they came out, um, this way you don't have to figure out which issue of X-Force takes place before which issues of Marauders. This puts them all there for you. And I will tell you that I have uh, read the first issue of uh, Ten of Swords really now. Sure, yes. And uh, it, it's really good. Uh, so I, I like, I'm, I'm really happy. And you're not caught up on all the I am not series, caught up. But you can still um, enjoy it. But I can still enjoy it. Um, obviously, I can tell I've missed some things, but I know there's enough. It, 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 there's nothing that's missing from the Ten of Swords story to make it make sense. Okay, so. so You could pretty much go from House of Ten and Powers of X yes. straight to Ten of Swords and, and not feel yes. too left out. Yes, cool. you can. So uh, we all know that uh, House of Swords and Power, House of X and Powers of Ten were some of the biggest sellers Marvel had uh, in quite some time. Um, so. And so you don't have to read every single one of all of the Dawn of X stories in order to be able to read. I'm sorry, it's Ten of Swords. But anyway, Ten of Swords. It's, 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 no, no, it's, it's a tarot card, so it's Ten of Swords. It, it, there's Ten Swords. This is, you know, continues to be overseen, and, and uh, this is largely scripted by, by Hickman, so uh, you can definitely jump in and, and enjoy this story. It's ten of Swords. Anyway, this is an actual book book that we didn't talk about because we just, it's a book book. It's a novel, The Walking Dead Typhoon. It is a novel but, that we have a novel. 
it, it is novel that we have a novel. We have some novels here. We do have a, a yeah. we have an entire you know section for novels. But in a weekly video. We rarely have novels. That's true. Novel it is novel to have a novel. But anyway, it's Walking Dead. So what can you say? We had to order it. The uh, comic shop I went to in Gainesville when I was at UF was called Novel Ideas. I thought it was a great name for it. It was just books and comics, but I thought it was a great name. That's a great name for a bookstore, Novel Ideas. Are you ready? We're going to give it a go. Let's ready, go ahead and take not. this one out. So huh? can you want to take this one out? I was going to leave it there so I could still keep trying to get things straight, but you want to take it out. Plus, this way we can enjoy the, the Jeff Bridges. There's book. something to look at while they're... while they're waiting for me. Okay. See, I normally have the light coming from the back end, so I'm not having to try to straddle it. That's part of the problem. Part of my problem. Oh, it's, it's all that. Okay. All the shine. Uh, we're good. This is Adler number four from Titan Comics. And then the variant cover is the homage cover, right? It's the Victorian homage cover, yes. I don't know. It's a specific homage to something from the Victorian age, but it's. But they've all had that same cover. Victorian to them. style. That that same. I like that one though. That one's black. <laughs> uh, and then we have Adventure Man number four, and she appears to have wings. I've not been reading Adventure Man. I think I made this comment on number three, but I need to read this one. Yeah, I do need to get caught up. So. I like my fraction. I like the bots and artwork. So I definitely need to get caught up. I need to be reading this one. And then we have Alien, the original screenplay. Uh, this is issue number, I can't read it. Well, this is issue number three. It's really tiny. Issue number three. Um, I probably have to say of three, but I'm probably wrong. Yes, so. I believe Alien, This I believe this is the, the final issue of Alien. I don't know, I tried to make note of the books that said they were the end. <clears throat> and this is the variant cover, which he does not look like he's having a good day. Nope, definitely not. Of course, if you've seen Alien, most of them, most of them, don't, most of them have, don't have good days. No, this is I true. Really like the first one, I, 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 don't, I don't watch Alien. Yeah, it's an artistic cover as opposed to the art cover. Definitely don't read the original screenplay in graphic form. <laughs> I am curious to see how it was different, but I don't remember. I saw Alien when it came out way back in the dark ages of film. I didn't. <laughs> Still haven't. <laughs> ah, American Ronin. This is the new AWA book uh, that several people have been asking us about. And it got pushed back a little bit because AWA believes in making sure that all of their, I think they, the first four have to be ready before they produce, release yeah. the first one. Um, so because publishers shut down and things of that nature, uh, they pushed this back. But now American Ronin number one is here and it is ready for you to take home and enjoy. And there is a B cover. That is an awful lot of smoke for one gun. He must have shot a lot. <laughs> this is by Peter Milligan, a British author. Did some really great stuff back in the early days of DC's Vertica line. Um, and this will be, this will be, Run American Run will be a five issue miniseries. So this is number one. Um, so then we have a new number one from DC, American Vampire, 1976. This is a continuation of Scott Snyder's Vampire Saga uh, that DC put, print put out a little while ago. Uh, this is the, the finale of it. And there is the variant cover, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I like that variant cover. <clears throat> I think they have been around since long before 1976. That car, sir. <laughs> well, I mean, based on their clothing, they yeah, also... That, that is, that is <laughs> their clothing in the uh, wooden structure in the background <laughs> leads me to believe that they are... Uh, in the 1920s? Oh, Backer Barn. I was just about to say that. It's a Backer Barn. We have an Aquaman number uh, 63. We did not get a regular cover of Aquaman 63, but this is a really super cool variant. Uh, Avengers number 36. This is um, The Age of Khonshu part 4. And uh, it looks like Black Panther is fighting ghosts. I could be wrong. It's just not a. Uh, I believe it's fighting Moon Knight. I'd be my Moon guess. Moon Knight. But um, is this not a, a reorder? Mm, I don't think I was so. Thinking it came out last week. But anyway, I could be wrong. I looked at this stuff so far. I, I had <clears throat> Backtrack. This is from Oni Press, and this is number uh, seven. Seven. 
I'm not really very helpful when I'm sitting on this side of the camera. Uh, bang, number four. This is from Dark Horse Comics. And I'm really trying to figure out what's going on here because I feel like she's knocked her own head off her shoulders, which is probably not a good choice in the long run. But I don't know. Maybe somebody else knocked her head off her shoulders and she just swang through it. Swang? Swung? Swung through it. <laughs> I teach English to children in China. That's really great. <laughs> Swang. <laughs> Swang. <laughs> it's Southern draw, y'all. All right. And then we come to the super cool book. Uh, this is Batman 100. number 100. And this is the Batman side of this rap cover. Of the Joker War storyline. And this is the Joker side of the Batman cover. I would try to get it both under the screen for you, but it's not going to happen. So just, just picture that wrapping around. If you kind of go this like this. Yeah, see, that looks really cool. That looks so wicked. We have to do that on the wall. <laughs> this is our copies, uh, for our personal copies we use for the video, and that is how it's going to hang on the wall, because that just looks really cool. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, Matina, right? Matina uh, variant power? Yeah, cardstock variant. Uh, cardstock variant. And then the blank, which you know how I am about blanks and not having just plain white covers anymore. Love the bats in the background. The just really cool. cool. You don't very even cool. need to have it done by anybody. It's a cover. No, I mean, I like it the way it is. It doesn't have to be a sketch cover, but it is. And then the 1 in 25. Super awesome Batman. New Batman. Yeah, super awesome. New costume is definitely very interesting. Curious to see where that, where that goes. Super awesome. And he is trying to pull out some more books. So we can move on. See, there needs to be like three of us, so one, <laughs> one can be pulling the new books. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to Black Widow. Um, so in case you hadn't heard, the Black Widow movie has been pushed back, but the Black Widow comic is still here, so you can still get your Black Widow. Um, this is number two, and this is the J. Scott Campbell cover, which is some Mokin. Notice it's the same stylistic layout as the, the red and black uh, J. Scott Campbell for number one. Smoking. And then we have the first of our Alex Ross Timeless variants for this week um, Black Widow, of course. And then this is a variant cover, which I don't know that I wrote the name on the back, but I was trying to do it if I didn't know who the artist was. Okay. Um, and then we have the um, the game cover variant, Fortnite. Need the back of it. Oh, okay. Never mind. And then we have um, the horror, the tomb cover. That one I did run on the back of. It has a name. The tomb of Black Widow. The spider stalks the night. Marvel is doing a series of horror-esque uh, covers. I just anytime they do the retro uh, logo stuff, I just he loves it. I love it. I'm old. I was it's there when that was the current logo. And this is by looks like Squabby. Is the yeah. Um, and then we have uh, the incentive variant. It's from War Twenty Five, right? I believe I wrote it on the back. I think. She did not, but I'm pretty sure it's a one in twenty-five. You know why I didn't? Because Marvel doesn't tell you what the incentives are. Anyway. You have to go look it up to figure out what they are. Because <laughs> I don't remember to do that off half the time. But I sealed it, so I knew it was a variant cover. <laughs> An incentive variant cover. Maybe this one will end up on the shelf. Well, don't put it in that box. <laughs> All right, and then it's continuing in the whole Black Widow montage. Maybe we should have said with, with <laughs> Middle Earth ducks and, and spiders. 
Um, anyway, uh, this is the Crimson Dynamo Strikes Again, and none but Iron Man can hope to stop him. But this is introducing the Black Widow. Tales of Suspense. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is number 18. And then we move on to Champions. This is a five issue miniseries. I think I said five. Yeah, five issue miniseries uh, of the Champions. Um, if you remember, they have been outlawed. It is illegal for um, teenagers to be superheroes. Uh, so the Champions are having a hard time superheroing because they got to kind of do it on the down low. Uh, but anyway, this is your regular cover. This is your B cover, which I don't know what they're fighting, but it I'm does not, sure not look is. good. He, is, he, he does not look good. I love Miles Morales. Then we have the zombie variant. Uh, it's the only one, so I, don't, I thought maybe it was, but I don't. I looked it up and it didn't say it was. Cover. That's, I think that's fun. Not really sure what Ironheart there is doing, but she looks like she's a little afraid of the zombies. Uh, then we have uh, another cover. Maybe I put the name of the artist in the back. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Nope, did not. Nope, did not. And then we have Momoko. It's very easy to tell because her Momoko is awesome. This is a ratio variant, although it doesn't say in the back. I'm guessing it's either a 1 in 25 or a 1 in 50. Oh, sorry for the lack of information. Probably a 1 in 50. And here is another Lynn, cover. I think. Oh, is that the Ron Lynn? Yeah. That's Lynn's. Yeah, Ron Lynn. Does that one say on the back? No. Nope. Oh, yeah, Ron Lynn. He signed the book, so you can actually tell. All right, moving on. Conan the Barbarian, the Sumerian people of the Black Circle, number two. It's Conan. Well, yes, it's based on the original stories by Robert E. Howard, but the, the place doesn't own the rights to do Conan, so it's just an American. So nobody gets sued. That is a fierce looking cover. <clears throat> and that is the, the B cover. And the C cover. And the D cover. And one of those has a name in the back of it. You're not paying attention. Yeah, that one is the best of the three covers, I think, because it's the Frank Miller uh, Return of the Dark Knight homage cover. It's a nice cover. Shadowy. Cyberpunk. Trauma team. It's from twenty seventy seven. Dark Horse. Video game. And it is number two. Then we have Deceased Dead Planet, which uh, the deceased books have been real popular, really done well. Um, and uh, apparently some really good horror stories because everybody who's bought any of the deceased books have gone back and bought all the rest of them, yep. <laughs> all of the miniseries. So this is Deceased Dead Planet number four and um, <clears throat> New Genesis, new horror. It's a fierce cover. I'm nearly a purple fan. So the, the colors of the cover just, I, I, I love it. And then the... Green Lantern as a zombie is just frightening as anything. Because <laughs> they can make anything their mind can think of come to life. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not liking that thought. Anyway, um, but there they are. Up in space, apparently. Apparently we're sticking our zombies in space. <laughs> oh, these are the Green Lanterns that are good. They are all lanterns, aren't they? Uh, they seem to be, yes. Yeah. They're coming to take care of our Green Lantern that has turned into a zombie. <laughs> that's not good. Then we have Deadpool number seven. 
Did you notice that the gunshot looks like it's a heart shaped? Oh, it does, doesn't it? So right. is he in love with this chick? Well, maybe so. <laughs> maybe she's in love with him. That's why she she killed him. Shot him in a heart. <clears throat> According to Bon Jovi. Hey, and you're You're to blame. To blame. <laughs> so that we didn't talk about this. Decorum. decorum. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Jonathan Hickman from House of Ten, Powers of X, Powers of Ten, House of X, Shamil, uh, Shamazel. And this is from Image Paul Comics, and I, I love Decorum. I need to read this. This is the one that goes to the top of my list. Oh, excuse me. Apparently, like I need to go to bed. Like very similar cover. That's this cover, the B cover. Very similar, yes. I actually thought maybe it was <laughs> a secret variant at first. I was like, oh, did they do a it? No. It's a B cover. It's a cover of bees. Um, so then we have Die. Remember I told you the trade paperbacks were here, and if you ha hadn't been reading it, you needed to be reading it. Well, you need to be caught up because number 14 is out. This is the regular cover. And this is the absolutely gorgeous variant cover. Just beautiful. And if you haven't noticed, um, if you were to cut out <laughs> your cover, you can make a die. All of these are the shape of a die. Is that what they that make, is? It makes a geometric shape. Yes, it's a die. Oh, that's clever. And the numbers are on one of the faces, so that it's the, yeah. Anyway. Um, that is very clever. Disaster Inc., number four. I'm thinking that there is definitely a disaster in the aftershock world because that is a whole lot of corpses. dead skeletons. Yeah, I guess another corpse. Doctor Who, Time Lord Victorious. This is from Titan Comics, and this is uh, issue two. Exterminate. And that is the photo cover. And this is the... Uh, the... Uh, Regular cover, I think. No, no, C D cover. That was the, the B cover. This is the C cover. Um, but yeah, so in case you were wondering which doctor, there you go. Sandman Universe. This is Dreaming Waking Hours, issue number three. And this is just a gorgeous cover. And a really good book. I definitely recommend it. Even if you haven't read any of the Sandman stuff before, you can jump on with this one. It is really good. Fantastic Four. This is issue number 24 for Fantastic Four. And this is a second print. Yes, second print for number four, 24. <clears throat> and then we have Fantastic Four Antithesis. And this is a second printing oh, number, um, one. number one of Antithesis. And then we have um, uh, the new Green Lanterns, the Young Animals Brought Us, Far Sector. Um, this is issue eight. Eight, yes. Unfortunately, I've lost my way on this series, but uh, the first the first handful of issues were really solid. Uh, Green Lantern as an actual detective uh, solving a, a crime, really, really good. I strongly recommend it. Uh, there was a variant cover. Did it not get in the box? Evidently not. There's a variant cover. Firepower, issue number four. Now, Firefly was out last week, but we did not have enough covers to uh, show off. This is a brand new Firefly story, um, Blue Sun Rising. So, pretty cool. Boom has brought us in an entirely new story for all of us Firefly fans. So, there you go. And then we have G.I. Joe. This is Snake Eyes, uh, Dead Game. This is issue number two for um, the Snake Eyes this is the story, the uh, series written and drawn by Rob Liefeld, which is going to point to this on here too. And there's the variant cover. Definitely the strongest uh, G.I. Joe selling book in quite some time. All right, we have a new number one from Image. This is called Getting It Together. And if you have any recollection of TVs from the uh, 80s and 90s, this cover is definitely an homage. Yeah. <clears throat> definitely. 
Oh, maybe that was right. I don't remember how it goes. Anyway. <laughs> faster at the beginning. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not right. Anyway, yet. this is the B cover. Okay. Getting it together, number one. This is Green Hornet, but um, it is the week's black and white premiere variant for Green Hornet number three. Maybe we, the artist, not the week or the founder. No, Weeks is the artist. Hollywood Trash number one is finally here. From Mad Cave Studios. And then we have Horizon Zero Dawn. This is issue number three of this uh, so cool comic based on the video game. And this is the Momoko cover. The folks at uh, Titan are one of the few publishers who have like put their Momoko where their mouth is. And they have made the Momoko the main cover. And not one of the variants or one of the hoops that you have to jump for to get. Well, they had Momoko before. Didn't they have her sign before she became uh, Super have, Momoko? Yeah. That, that one's not yours. Uh, and uh, Marvel just announced uh, earlier today, or maybe yesterday, or sometime within the last week, uh, the replacement for their Young Guns Artist Program. And uh, they're calling it... I have no idea. <laughs> um, but uh, Well, we are just full of information tonight. But Momoko is one of their... She's the only one, that, well, only one of the artists on that list that uh, is a, a cover exclusive artist as opposed to doing uh, materials but a lot of good artists on that on that no longer called young guns list anyway ink blot this is number two this looks like a cute book from image i need to read this one it looks cute. yeah i don't know that i look at that cover and say cute although the cat doesn't i do enjoy the cat i mean the cat's not enjoying no, itself i mean the, I the, the the book looks cute i mean the, the, well, i i, yeah, I, I think Two-headed demon dragon it, things it's, always. It's just got four eyes. It doesn't have two heads. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Four-headed. Four-eyed. <laughs> four eye well, I don't know. No, that's just nose. So four-eyed, flaming nose, sharp breath It breathes fire. Do you know, name a dragon, a red dragon that doesn't breathe fire. Now, come on. I don't know what the dragon might be. It's a dragon. Look at it. No, I think it's a dragon. I think it's a dragon. I think it could be a dragon. Or a Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Well, anyway, we have Storm Kids. John Carpenter presents. Not a kid's book. Uh, then we have... I think it is. It hasn't gone in the kid's book. Oh, anyway, Justice League, number 54. In the Valley of the Staros. And this is part of Death Metal. So... This is the second part of the Justice League tie-in to, uh, to Death Metal. I think it's three or four issues it's going to be... Five issues. Five, five issues are going to be Death Metal? Yeah. Uh, but it's the only <laughs> what do I know? It's the only tie-in, at least that they've announced that I'm aware of, uh, that ties into one of the regular DC books. Um, it's all in Justice League. No, we don't have to jump around like we did. Yeah, <laughs> last time. That's good. Um, and this is the variant cover. Both are pretty wicked-looking covers. Yeah, Nightwing's looking a little buff. I don't know. Looking a little nomadic, really. Which is, <laughs> a little, little barbarian. Shoulder pads. <laughs> That's what the agency did. Fuzzy shoulder pads. <laughs> it would have never gone away if we'd done that, right? All right, Lock and Key. This is volume two of In Pale Battalions Go for Lock and Key. What do we know on that? Finally finished watching the Lock and Key Netflix show. Um, I really enjoyed it. And this is the retailer incentive cover for Lock and Key, which is a one in ten variant. Oops. It is the cover in black and white, and it is the camera is freaking out again. Um, and then we have Lonely Receiver. This is issue number two for Lonely Receiver from Aftershock Comics, which of course has a purple cover, so Derek is in love with it. And then the variant cover, which I'm just wanting to know what's going on. Is she making love to a water person? Um, I, I told you that you had to read number one. I don't think you have. have I have you? not had a chance to read Lonely Receiver, no. It, I, I read the whole first issue, and honestly, until I read the pseudo-sales pamphlet at the back, I, I didn't 
really understand what was going on because of what I thought was going on. It didn't seem like it could be what was going on. When I read that, I realized that is what's going on. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It is. Oh, it's a computer. He's, it is, he's breaking up into to bits. It is very strange. It's not but, water, uh, it's bits. But I right, could so definitely I'm, see that being the way of the future. I apparently need to read Lonely Receiver. Uh, Lost Soldiers from Image Comics. And it's issue number... Uh, it's on here somewhere, I'm sure. But then it might not be. Number three. All right. It has zeros in front of it, which confused me. I wasn't looking for a three-digit number. It's number three of five. And then we come to Marauders, which is part of the Ten of Swords uh, issues. And this is a, just a really pretty color. There. Subtle with the Marauders on the X of Swords cover. I don't know that I quite agree with that, but okay. And then this is the Fortnite, Fortnite variant. Yep. She said authoritatively. And the Alex Ross Timeless variant. Oh. Uh, I see. That was said authoritatively, at least. What? I read Marauders. <laughs> and this is called, it has a special name. What is this called? It, it, I, I think I wrote, did I not write it on the back? No. <gasps> I thought I would remember. Because it's really cool. But anyways, that's another cover. It's a super cool cover. It is. Storm Lightning. We'll call it Storm Lightning, and then I'll know which cover you mean, but it's a super cool cover. <laughs> and this is also... Part of Marauders. This oh. is the horror variant. Sorry, my bad. And um, Storm is just looking, I don't know, man. She's just wicked. Seriously wicked. By the way, there's... Hellstorm! There's a trailer out for the Hulu Hellstorm TV series. Which I think that's really cool. Then we have Marked. Uh, I love this book. Uh, Image Comics. I cannot wait to read this one. This is number two on my list of things I need to read this week, right away. It is, and there is a variant cover. No. Marvel Fanfare. I hey, guess what? It's Black Widow. Yeah, we definitely should have said with Middle Earth ducks and spiders. <laughs> you know, I'm Spiders, I don't think spiders, but I think of Black Widow. Um, Marvel Fan Bear, uh, it was issue 10. This is their facsimile edition for this week. I mean, am I the only one who, I mean, of all the spiders that you think of with Marvel, I, I don't think of Black Widow. I mean, she, that is the name of a spider. I give you that, but I just don't go there with her. Dead. Okay. The best way, well, I guess because she the doesn't have actual... The whole point is because she kills... Well, and right. the Black Widow kills. Yes, yes. But I mean, it's the whole... When you think of spiders, you think of spider and Marvel. You think of Spider-Man. And then before you think of people bitten by radioactive spiders or otherwise tied up. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of spider people. Uh, exactly. And you don't think of uh, Black Widow as one of them. She's just named for a spider. Right. But she's not a spider. But there are a whole lot of spiders in today's comics, too. Because this is Marvel Snapshot Spider-Man. Number one. It's a one-shot. And then we have Marvel Zombies. The original Marvel Zombies for Marvel Tales this week. And then we have number 15 of the Magnificent Miss Marvel. Again, remember, outlawed. They, um, they just announced casting for Ms. Marvel on the uh, Disney Plus TV series. Um, somebody who has not actually acted in anything ever before. So it'll be kind of interesting. She's a great look for it. Okay, so, Money Shot. In case you weren't sure what this book was about, it pretty much tells you on the cover. Um, people running. And having sex. In space. I guess see people running. Yeah, you see the people having sex. I never see people having sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't go to those parts of the internet. I'm so not going to say anything because... <laughs> Okay, I, w I took that differently than, than you did, and, and I was thinking it said something about our relationship. But anyway, Death and oh, Nancy Drew, number five. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure. 
I love that cover. It's beautiful. Mm, I turned red. Ninja High School. This is the retro cover. Uh, from Atlantic Press. Antarctic Press. Who is it from? Antarctic Press. Well, this is the, the $1.50 uh, retro cover uh, for issue 177, celebrating 35 years of Antarctic Press. And maybe even Ninja High School. And no one's rose. There's a colored version of that as well. I don't know if it's the same cover or not, but we don't seem to have that here. And that's also no one's rose. The variant cover, which I did put the artist's name on the back of that one because I thought it was an interesting cover. Gorum. Gorum. And it's a very fun cover. And it's purple. It so, is. you know. This is part two of two. Launch, launch day. day. Then we have Petro 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 Petroica Petrotia. I, I can't say this. Petroica. Pe Petroica. There's a T in the middle there. Patriotica. That's what it is. Patriotica. Patriotica. Okay. Patriotica. Okay. Patriotica. Uh, and this is issue two. This is also from Antarctic Press, but Patriotica number one sold out immediately. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and from new one from Ahoy Comics, this is called Pentult, Pent, Pentult, Penultimate, Pen, Man. Penultimate Man. He's not the last man, he's the penultimate man. And he's having some issues with his uh, robot sidekick, who is made after him, modeled after him. I haven't had a chance to read this yet, but uh, Ahoy has done a lot of good work. They're, uh, they're uh, worlds apart. Um, take on the, the Batman storyline mythology was, was awesome. Uh, Billionaire Island's been really good, um, and there was another one that I'm drawing a blank on, so I am definitely looking forward to this one. And this is a variant cover. He appears to have lost some weight. Oh. Oh. What? Honestly, not what I took from that cover, but okay. I thought he was checking something out. No, he's lost weight. He's holding his pants up. Right. He's standing well, in front of the scale. He's holding his pants out. Okay, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Like I said, I didn't count that. That, that's a and way to I'm go. the one that's not allowed to talk anymore? Okay. The Prisoner. This is from uh, Source Point. This is a new number one. And then we have Red Sonia. This is issue number 28. 20, no, 20 even. Oh, issue number 20. Interesting daily like cover there. Cover. Michael, uh, Michael J. Lindsner uh, cover. I believe it says on the back. Guess not. No? Okay. And a somebody else, neither of those two. That one should say on the back. Oh, uh, Jonathan Lau. Yes, this is the one in seven Jonathan Lau homage cover, although. All right. Oh, oh, okay. Now I see what's going on. It's Bane breaking Batman's back. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Kind of confused, but you got the pseudo giant penny and the dinosaur, which makes more sense in Red Sonia than it did in Batman. <laughs> and then the Virgin, which is the one in ten. Yes, Red Sonia and the Virgin. Those two words go together a lot. The Virgin cover. Then we have the tint. Well, it's not really a tint. It's well, I don't know if they call it a tint or not. It's a red sketch. Well, look on the back. It tells you. Uh, it does say tint. Usually with the tints, they're like tinted, but this was just red red ink, red lines. I'm... It's red tint. But it's not tinted. I think that the others are like tinted, like in a wash, whereas this is ink. I'm not going to argue with them because I didn't name it. I just wrote down what it said on the screen. Nor did I. Maybe you just 
decided you wanted to have Red Sonia. <laughs> okay, we are at 50 minutes. Our people are getting bored out of their minds. We need to step this up a bit. <laughs> Sacred Six, issue three. Main cover. Cover. Sexy cover. It tells you on the back. If it doesn't on that one, it does on the Virgin. To make a hat trick cover. And that will tell you on the back of the version as that well. That is the hat trick. In fact, that actually has not been on it. I'm not sure who that is. That is the Chew. That's Chew. That's the Derek Chew uh, variant. That's a whole lot of butts. <laughs> that is a cool cover there. I like that one. That is the Chat Zudis cover. Probably not saying his name right or her name right, but that is that one. Love the Leopard. And there it is in black and white. It's one of their ratio variants. Is the Chat Zudis is the one in seven, and then the Virgin is the one in ten. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll keep going with. Got it, order. Yep. Uh, so this is the, uh, the Derek Chu. The Chu. This is the one in eleven monochromatic. The Hetrick uh, 1 in 20 version. And then there you go with the uh, Perillo black and white. Should have done that. Could make it out down there at the bottom. Should have, though. Anyway. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, for some reason, we have Marvel Shap not Shap the Marvel Snapshots variant cover. Uh, that was a book we had a little while ago. This is Marvel Snapshots number one also, variant cover. I don't know why that got out of order so far, but anyway. This should have been way back with the M's. <laughs> okay, well, how about you put another book up there and then find it? It says something on the back. Was it? Is it a variant? I mean, is it a... a... It says... Shaken variant. That one I wrote the name of the artist on. Not stirred. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog has a new comic. This is a new number one for Sonic called Bad Guys. Go Sega. <laughs> and there's a subscription variant. No, so if you subscribe one. to uh, Sonic, this is your cover B. Which I don't know who that duck is. Because I don't play Sonic. It's just called cover B now. All right, so now we start with the Amazing Spider-Man number 850s. Actually, it's square-bound. Is there a square-bound? It's issue number 49, but it's Spider-Man 850. I don't know how Marvel counts. I don't understand how Marvel counts. Legacies, not legacies. Oh, wait, it's legacy. Oh, wait, it's number 49, and it's number 850. Because that way we can make a whole bunch of covers that you want to have. And chart by it. So this is your regular cover. Keep in mind, next issue is number 10. Also an anniversary. This is Asrar. Asrar? A-S-R-A-R? Asrar? If I'm... I, yeah, uh, to all the artists out there whose names I butcher, I apologize. <clears throat> this is a Green Goblin by... Here's your Mark Zackley variant. Here's your Nick Bradshaw variant. This is really cool. All the villain, all the rogues gallery in the background. Here's your super amazingly sexy with Venom uh, in Hayoki Lee variant. Here's your Copiel variant. I like that one. Here is your Patrick Gleason variant. Another Green Goblin, but... And he's also uh, one of the guys who are in that No Longer Called Young Justice... Uh, no Longer Called Young Guns <laughs> uh, artist shout-out group. Um, and this is very timely because, you know, all the pumpkins makes it a Halloween issue. So. And then we have the Inhayoki Lee 1 in 25 variant. Also Halloween. <laughs> and a super cool Green Goblin. And then we have, for some reason, the J. Scott Campbell open order variant. 
gorgeous. And you just get a sexy Mary Jane on there. And then we have the Ramos uh, variant. Another Green Goblin. And then we have the John a blank on his name, first name, um, the Tim's variant. That is, that is, I, I love that cover. Joetta was kind of iffy on it, but I really thought it was just kinchy. <laughs> yes, I watched Brit, uh, Gidget back in the day. And I'm not sure who this artist is. Kind of a hack, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, he's, he's just kind of young and Scotty and dreamy, and I just love this. And if you can't read it, I will read it to you because this is this is fun. What you gonna do with that pumpkin bomb? What pumpkin bomb? The one hiding behind your back. Nope, there's no pumpkin bomb here, pal. Then what's that smoke? Oh, that? I just tooted. Did you just say tooted? What? No, who talks like that? A villain hiding a pumpkin bomb behind his back. What pumpkin bomb? <laughs> That's my Scott. That's my Scotty uncover. <laughs> we have more though, so you can you can have some too. <laughs> you could have some fun Scotty Young in your life. And if you like Miles Morales Spider-Man, then you need to have issue number 19, because I think there's an evil Miles Morales on there. Do you notice that his eyes are giving out wispy red smoke? Like, his, his, eyes, are his, his eyes are leaking web, red webbing. It's really freaky. Um, Spy Island, the Bermuda Tri Triangle Mystery. We have another copy of number one. Okay, well, this is a copy. Okay. Just want to make sure before I send it. Uh, surprisingly, um, after... Dark Horse kind of fumbled the release of Spy Island, well, Dark Horse and COVID. Um, if you remember, they put out a second printing that came out the same time as the first printings, and all the printings disappeared instantaneously from the shelf. Um, we got in a reorder on the first printing, so this is indeed the first printing of cover A for, uh, for Spy Island, Bermuda Triangle Mystery, which I am very much looking forward to reading now that I can. And then we also have Spy Island number two. Also still a Bermuda <laughs> Triangle mystery. This is cover A. Fun, fun, fun. I like that hat. And this is cover B. Octopus. Apparently there are octopuses involved in each Bermuda Triangle mystery. Yeah, that's funny because we were just talking about the Bermuda Triangle. We were talking on camera or off camera? But the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, it must have been off camera. I don't know. I really think it was on camera. I don't know. If it was on camera, let us know. <laughs> if you're still watching this. If you're still watching this Star Wars, train wreck. Number seven. Uh, the Will of Tarkin and Tarkin. And the Greatest Moments variant. Chris Sprouse. Which says... Minox. And if you've seen the movie, you know Spouse. exactly what that means. Star Wars Adventures! Tales of Villainy, number one. So if you've been reading Star Wars Adventures, then it has started a new series. And this is the variant cover. Tales of Villainy. All right, so DC has jumped into the holiday issues. And yes, we have a Halloween Spectacular, which is the legend of the Swamp Thing. Ah! Happy Halloween. It's Jeremy's favorite Halloween, by the way. It um, is. Thor number eight. Um, Thor is um, a little oblivious in this cover. Either that or he is purposely determined to finish his sandwich. <laughs> right. You know what? The man's gonna eat what a man's gonna eat. Then there's the Ro Alex Ross Timeless variant. And then the horror variant, which is the Frankenstein. The Frankenstein Thor. Yeah. Resurrected, Resurrected by, by the, the lightning, lightning. He, he once commanded. It's the Frankenstein Thor. <laughs> and then there's a giant dragon on the cover of this Thor. And this is the 1 in 25 variant. 
And then continuing Oni Press's determination of crossing everything over with the Terminators. Anything that Transformers, ha Transformers has you know existed with, then they now can. Um, yeah. So Transformers Back to the Future. <laughs> Marty McFly. And there is the variant cover, which looks like they're also in Minecraft because they're building with cubes. <laughs> So I'm a little worried about what's going on here. Did we send the Back to the Future people to uh, Minecraft? And this is the 1 in 10 Shoning, Shoning? Shoning variant. Which has Bumblebee and the DeLorean. What more could you want? If Nick or anybody wants that cover, make sure you let us know. Transformers My Little Pony! Friendships in Disguise! Because if you have one Transformer crossover one week, you need to have two Transformer crossovers for that week. All right, so Rise of Ultraman. This is issue number two. And there's your variant cover. And this is another variant. And then we come to Venom. I know we're in a hurry, but I just think that's really cool with the reverse. How do you know he's not supposed to be coming at you? I mean, he's doing this. How's he? Okay. Ah. All right, so Venom. This is the third printing of issue number 27. And then we have a series I am very interested in reading again in a new way. Okay, so The Walking Dead Deluxe. This is issue number one of The Walking Dead in color. Right? Yep. And that what that's the deal. That's yep, the deluxe that, that, deal. That it is, is in color. Plus it has some additional materials at the end of each issue, uh, some behind the scenes stuff and, and whatnot. And um, this is the regular cover. This is okay. This is the uh, David Finch. Um, Finch? I mean, David, I'm not sure about it. Anyways, this is the Finch uh, homage cover, his take on the, the cover to the first, the original first issue. And then that is the colored version of the original first issue by Tony Moore. And then Charlie Adler, who took over art after the first storyline, didn't want to be left out of the whole thing at the beginning uh, with the new one. So he is doing a, a, a connecting cover and this is the first part of the Charlie Adler connecting cover. And hopefully Joe wrote these on the back because I am at a loss. I don't think I did. No, oh, I did. This is Tedesco. Oh, okay. Julian, Julian Tedesco. Go me! Uh, <laughs> remember the scene in the, in, in, uh, the first, uh, first issue? Uh, this is his take with that. Here are the really... Fun Art Adams cover, I believe. Yep, Adams. And then we have a blank cover. So you can get your favorite artist to draw a cover to The Walking Dead. And this makes sure you Issue one. one. Yes, it does. You can take that. We only find them when they're dead. Um, I read issue one. Loved it. If you like uh, sci-fi then you definitely need to um, definitely need to check this book out because this is a lot of fun. Um, it, I, I mean, I don't know what to say about it except that there are dead giant beings in space. Like galactic level giant. Like and yeah, we um, have no food or capacity of whatever to... It's a dystopian earth. So we harvest the dead beings uh, to keep us alive. Yeah. So that's why it's like zombie-esque looking on that variant cover there that she just took away. Because um, we, yeah, literally cut away like the cheek and harvest the meat. And yeah. So anyway. Uh, and then this is the one in ten, which I think is really kind of cool. Almost done, folks. We're in the exit. Wolverine! Wolverine! And also, Exosaurus, part two. 
nine. Um, and the Alex Ross timeless variant for Wolverine. He looks just mean. In, the, in his old brown uniform. And then the variant cover for issue six, which I did not yet say, which I did not write down who it was, but anyway, that's the variant cover for Wolverine number six. And continuing the X's, we have X-Force uh, number 13, which is X of Swords part four. And again, if you'll notice, X-Force is written really, really small, just like they did on Marauders for the A cover. But there's the Beast, is the Alex Rock's Timeless variant, which I think is a really nice drawing of Beast. I really love the color really tinting. Nice. Um, curious what's causing it, but I really love the color tinting on there. And then X-Force number 13, variant cover. And another X-Force number 13 variant cover. And this is the Fortnite variant cover. With Deadpool and Domino. And if you ask why is there a banana on the cover like I did, the answer is because it's Fortnite. I have no idea. I don't play the game. I don't know Fortnite, so yeah. Completely that is the reason there's a banana on the cover of X Force. Fortnite. If you play Fortnite, let me know why. I don't know. Is the banana good? Is he bad? What? Is there good and bad Fortnite? Do we do we like wanna kill the banana? I don't know. Anyway. The Pantheon Trials of Wonder Girl! Zeus, it's time to face the future! Young Justice number 19! And the variant cover for Young Justice number 19. That's really weird. And um, uh, DC is doing a uh, Ginny Hex one shot coming up. I like the Green Lantern made the camera. So it's oh, like, is true. it actually going to take a picture or is it just them? <laughs> it doesn't go away when she thinks about something else? Isn't that the way it works? Well, I mean, I imagine it doesn't because, you know, Green Lantern would be a giant boxing glove and beat somebody up. And I would imagine at some point while fighting, they'd get distracted if you're getting fired at also. But the, they're giant boxing gloves. I thought it was entirely will based. So if you're willing it into existence. Well, maybe it's just self created. Ah. Uh, Okay. All of my Green Lantern fans out there, let's argue this concept back and forth because I want I want to see that argument. Anyway, fearless don't me tell boy. Yeah, I no, we didn't get either of them in. Oh, okay. But now we have them, and this is the B cover. They are both by Magnola. They are not. One is by another artist. This one is controlled by another artist. Also starts with an M. I don't know. Again, don't listen to me. And then we look at, as we end our video. Is that it? That's it? That's all I got. Okay. We got the posters, but at this point, I don't know we need yeah. to do them. Let's do the posters quickly. I will hold up the camera, and Derek is going to quickly show you the the posters. He's just going to hold them up. So we have Werewolf by Night. Marvel Fanfare! Juggernaut! Marvel has taken over the Warhammer 40k license, as far as comics go, and their books will be coming out shortly. Oh, it's reflecting. I bet you you can expect there he goes. I bet you can expect Marinus Calgar. Marvel superheroes crossing over the Warhammer 40k collection, uh, one way or another. Really nice Mark Brooks, Mark Brooks here. For Fantastic Four. Then we have uh, Shang Chi. Number one came out last week. The poster came out. We do still have copies of number one, so feel free to uh, let us know that you want a copy of Shang Chi number one. Which I will admit um, sold a whole lot better than I expected it to. Spider Woman. So I'm curious to read it and see uh, what, what the hoopla is about. 
Spider-Woman in her new outfit fighting Hydra, apparently. Hopefully not joining Hydra. I don't know. Don't read Spider-Woman. And then Amazing Spider-Man. Does it say number 59? It does not. It, it says is, Gleason. This is uh, cover for Amazing Number 15. One of the covers for Number 15. Um, it looks like he wants to be shouting by the power of Grayskull, which I know is not <laughs> the correct license, but that is what I feel like he needs to be shouting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we love you. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Maybe I will see you all tomorrow. <laughs>